Welcome to Thailand, a place known for its beautiful landscapes, culture and full moon parties, but also some of the most truly incredible species of fish to angle for. When Martin first invited me over, I wasn't sure what to expect. All I knew was this venue held some ridiculous creatures. So I hopped on a plane full of anticipation to the amazing Jurassic Mountain Resort. After a much needed dip in the pool, it was finally time to get tackled up and try to catch some of these mega fish. Today is the day to settle in and have a real good sort out. £55 at Kling. It's not something I've ever used before. I was so blessed that I had a major helping hand for the duration of my stay, not only on the fishing front, but also with the filming. I've known Tom for many years through the UK angling industry, but a few years back, he moved his life over to Thailand. Tom was a perfect companion, guide, and mentor for such a session, where let's be honest, it was all so new to me. Rigs had been in the water no more than 15 minutes and I was into my first fish from Jurassic Mountain. Definitely not the biggest in the lake, but what a great way to start the day off. And by the looks of things, it was going to be another busy one. Just headed round to Martin and Sam's swim because they've got a true monster on. Uh, I think they've probably been playing it about 10, 15 minutes now. You pulling, Sam? Yep. Good skills on the net, bro. Well done, mate. Well done. Cheers. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. Tom then taught me for a seriously beefed up pellet waggler setup and gave me some modified floats. I couldn't wait to give this a try, feeding pellet up in the water to get the fish competing in the upper layers. Tom will have to call it. Very beautiful. Bubbles. Yes. Yeah, show them it. Good show them. Alright. Alright. <laughs> nice making those little adjustments and that like. God, that was a good foot and a half shallower. Ah. Yeah. yeah. You bit us off. She's gone on it. Athens. Yeah, I'm getting more brave, and I'm trying to that clutch up that oh, was. Was. Yeah, of course I was. Like, come on, man. <laughs> Oh, you can do this all day long! Oh. 
no nothing, bruv, nothing. Wait, this So there's the result of Pellet Waggler Float Court Cup from Jurassic Mountain. It's something I wanted to do when I came out here, a bit of Pellet Waggler fishing. And yeah, blown away. First one doing it. An incredible place. And an incredible way to catch them. Something completely different and alien. And certainly productive. There's no time to do anything here. <laughs> we only just managed to eat our delicious lunch. Got the bottom bait rods back out, was just critically balancing a hook bait to go on the pellet waggler rod. By taking half a cultured hook bait and half a pop up, just so it sunk that little bit slower. Just testing it in the water and wee! Off it went! Look at it! <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, it's certainly not a venue that you can easily fish multiple rods because the takes just so, come so quickly. It's a big one. Yeah, this is incredible. This is... <laughs> just feel it. I, I don't know what it is or... but it's bigger. Of course I am! My arm could snap at any minute. <laughs> Used to catching doubles at a park like. <laughs> well, carp number four for me, and they're getting bigger. In a way, I'm really glad that I didn't catch a true monster as my first fish, and I'm having to, to work through them a little bit. <laughs> this last time it was about 26 pounds or something. Yeah. I don't know if you had this in limp mode. Now. I think I am a little bit from, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a wide fish, man. Well, it's my biggest one so far. To me, this is enormous. What do you reckon, Tom? 70, be, 80 pounds? It's got to be pushing 80, yeah. yeah such an incredible carp. Yeah, wait till you see the size of this. Okay. Wow. It's going to be my last. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be my last. So oh, it's just been the most amazing day. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat tiring, but just before packing up everything, had a little wander down here. Typical of what you'd find on any fishery anywhere in the world in the margins, and that is the water pluming and colouring up. And you can clearly see the fish down there feeding. Uh, wow. Tom explained to me it's a good area for the arapaima or maybe a big red tail cat. And yeah, uh, fed some fish. Uh, up the hook size, and just put on half a fish, lip hooked, and the rod had been in the water oh, less than five minutes, definitely less than five minutes. We're into something, again, very powerful.
Yeah. We've crept down here with the hope of a big Arapaima. But I've got a massive red tail catfish instead. And I'm, yeah, super happy. They really are incredibly marked, beautiful colours and really strong. So anyway, oh, I can't contain myself. Uh, we fed a few more fish because the water started boiling and swirling. I don't know why I'm whispering because I don't think Arapaima can hear you talking, but yeah, there's definitely some really big fish down that right-hand margin. So I'm gonna let this one disappear off and uh, go and get another hook bait out there. Just had a severe take in swim one. Right on margin, this thing's just kited straight up the lake, past swim two, past swim three. Back in play. I've hooked some serious fish today, but nothing like this. Nothing like this. Gain nothing on it. First 30 seconds, it's really slow, just kited round in front of me and then it's just gone. Big red tail. <laughs> no way, mate. No way. Are you surprised? How long did that take? <laughs> mental, absolutely mental. Beast, Be beasted me, that's for sure. That one's a red tail. Left one. Uh, the right one. I just saw one come up. Let me have a go at like this. Second morning, I've had a very busy night downloading SD cards, preparing all my tackle, didn't sleep, purely for excitement, and then had a few technical difficulties this morning, but that doesn't matter, because Mr. Bowler is already into a monster carp. Don't need the gym here, Alan. You certainly don't. I feel like I've done a lifetime of gym work yesterday. Big Simon. Oh my lord. Dragging out, Alan. Truly impressive beast. One squat lift. Shoot, 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 shoot. Down, down, down. Time, this beauty goes back. Absolutely. Don't want to let go. Just give it a cuddle. That's it, okay? Go on. Go on. What like? Big up. Smashed it. So we're just walking around to my swim for the day. I think it's peg number six. I'll have to double check that with Tom, but yeah, really excited. Obviously when you've spent a day at a venue, you start to learn pieces of information, bits of the jigsaw puzzle, and I felt I did that yesterday. It was a, a steep learning curve for me, not in terms of rigs and stuff, but just how to play the fish, how to handle them, uh, how to really work a spot and the importance of that. You know, the moment you really start feeding. Morning guys, hiya. Uh, the moment you start really feeding is the moment you start to really see success come through and stuff. So really worked the peg today, a number of different tactics. And most importantly for myself really, try and catch some new species. Super excited. It's gonna be another lovely day. No doubt we'll have plenty of rain, but yeah, get those rods out. Catch some more monster fish. Literally living the 
drain. That's the drain right there. Are you sure? Well, this is the big carp rod. Big 24 mil cultured hook bait with half a 20 mil Scopex squid on the top. Baited quite heavily. Probably put 50 boilies around it. Big fish. Big fish. It's hardly moving. You see the line in the water. It just, there we go. It just sat there. And again, just sitting there. We're going to rest now. We're going to break Alan Blair. This would break any man. A week here. Yesterday was one of the greatest days fishing I've ever had. And I've done a lot of days fishing. Yeah, a lot. Uh, it's intense. It's, you put, what you put into it, you get out. You know, so the more you work it and feed, the more you catch. It's braised nose on crack, like. Bobby, I can torture you with Bobby. Yeah, you're in. That was hard work, wasn't it? What a fight. <sighs> what a truly incredible creature. Mecca. Well, what a moment. Second day in and I've caught this ridiculously big fish. Thank you, Jurassic Mountain. Wow. What incredible. So yesterday, prolific day on the Siamese carp. We followed on this morning, same thing right on rods producing. Now, Siamese carp, happy days. Let's try and mix things up a bit, a few different species. Main thing in Thailand, quite a traditional technique. We call this lam, pronounced lam in Thai, spelled lum in English. This is basically a byproduct from the rice industry. What we've done here is prefer quite a bit of bait, quite a bit of crushed boily, run that through the crusher, get it nice and fine. Because these species are predominantly filter feeding, we don't want any big bits in there. The idea of this is that it's going to bind well. Now, it doesn't smell particularly potent. That's where we've got a bit of coconut milk that comes in. Clouds up the water, just same you would with a sloppy spod mix, it's no different. Get that mixed in. There you have it, nice and simple, go around the feeder, enters the water, back down into nothing, perfect. Well, Tom's not my mix up. We've had a bite to eat, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the rods back out. We made an executive decision between the two of us that we wouldn't put any rods out until we'd eaten some lunch and had a bit of a tidy up. And that's because the moment you put a rod out here, it just rips off, so you get nothing done. So yeah, mix is complete. That's had a little bit of time to settle. We've applied a little bit more water to it just so it binds absolutely perfectly. And the setup's dead simple. I've got a very traditional method feeder here. It's actually something I haven't used for oh, probably about 15 years, but growing up here, a lot of my fishing was done with one of these. Um, they kind of go out of fashion and stuff and people forget about them, but they are still an incredible way of catching carp and, and other species, tench, bream, and here, who knows what. Um, as Tom explained, a very short hook link. I've got 35 pound armor link there, and I'm gonna pop up a little 15 mil Scopex squid straight up off that method feeder. And then just to finish the rig off, a section of Klingon tube, which is tungsten uh, and a back lead there just to pin everything down. So again, it couldn't really be any simpler. I'm gonna get some bait balled round here, give it a nice good squeeze, and I'm gonna start balling some balls out onto the spot. I've got a little ball maker with me, just make some uniform balls so they go out nice and consistently with a catapult and see if I can't whittle my way through a few more of these incredible species. Dead, dead simple and for sure, going on the results of Martin yesterday and Sam, really effective. My 
first Indian carp caught on the method feeder tactic. It's been a little bit slow on it, but with regular recasting, you yeah, have managed to catch this stunning fish. And the pearlescent colours on it, truly fantastic. Lost a couple, I think I'm going to alter with the rig slightly, maybe lengthen it a little bit. But yeah, mad chuff to have caught a new species. What an amazing fish. Brilliant. Things started to slow down on the method feeder, so I whacked out a big float with some bloody meat, hoping to tempt the predator. That float going now, big arrow pile next to it, just gulping, oh my lord. <sighs> that seriously makes you quite a race. <sighs> Mental. That was like so fast. It swam all the way down the lake and uh, managed to get it all the way back up to here within sort of 10 meters from the bank. Obviously, nowhere near ready to land, but yes, yeah, something's gone wrong. And bread on bread. Can't win them all. That's that's a chunk, man. That speed. It's a red tail and not nothing. Another world. Well. Bill's heavy. This looks like a gar, mate. That's a big fish gar. It looks like a gar, don't know. Please, please, please. Yeah, it looks like Please! I'm not just having you on it. I reckon. Yeah, you know, bro. Going in that and going to cage. Come on, bro. Yes. 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 <laughs> Give me a high five, bro. Yes. Oh man. God. Big one. Cage, mate. Get us a cage. <laughs> I apologise now for the end of Urban Banks. It was a great series. He wasn't quite <laughs> like it. It's over now. Bowler's here. He's taking over. All right, game over. <laughs> Yeah, you might have got that. Look at that. Alright, that's why you shunt them. Just missed me. My man's just been attacked. Flash that, innit? So you caught yourself a dinosaur, Alan. What do you think of Jurassic? What a moment, Martin. Um, yeah, this one really is something quite spectacular. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> What do I think of Jurassic Martin? <laughs> I'm having the time of my life, and that is a moment I'm never, ever gonna forget. Quality wow, man. wow. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Well done. Well, oh, incredible. Incredible. I'm still alive. Big ups. Big ups. Day number two over, and what an amazing day it's been. Uh, yeah, capped off by that ridiculously huge alligator car. Um, I've reeled my rods in now, um, and I'm really looking forward to going and having a lovely warm meal, a shower, some fresh clothes. Martin, on the other hand, he's still fishing, and that's because he's hooked into a monster. It's likely to be an arapaima, but we should find out a little bit more when we get down here. Right, just down the margins, we've got a big chunk of catfish, all bloody, gory stuff just literally flicked it right down the edge, inches from the back. It's just roared off. And I've seen it, so I know what it is. And it's an arapon, but it's beasting me. It's just staying underneath hyacinths and just holding under there, so I can't get a rod up. 
can see it's literally down here. Can't get the rod up. Pull it towards the cage. It's been our work the last couple of hours. <laughs> Alan attacked me with a garfish. <laughs> Tried to wipe me out. That's when it can break you. It might be, might be, might be, maybe. Well done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Good angle, mate. <laughs> Happy days, eh? Happy wow, days. First one I've seen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And nature's given them all that red. Yeah. Just amazing. And the tail. Look at that. I can't quite believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible. Look at that. Special, special fish. Beautiful creature. Those colours. So, so nice. Unlike your alligator gar, Alan. <laughs> I can actually stroke this one. You gotta be careful with this, because this thing really could smash my teeth out. Alan's went for my testicles, but this could take me head off. <laughs> Beautiful fish, aren't they? Yeah. After yet another very late night uploading Instagram stories and downloading footage, I disappointingly slept through my alarm. Not to worry, Tom was round to greet me with a fresh coffee. After getting the cameras and tackle together, the excitement was starting to build as we headed down to the lake for my third day's fishing. Blazing hot, and we've crept around to one of the quieter corners to do a little bit of stalking, just literally lowering some fish right in the edge with the intention of catching one of these huge, huge arapaima. We started off in this corner down here to my right, already had substantial sized red tail catfish. Left that alone to sort of let the disturbance calm down, come up into this one, and there are a few arapaima about coming up taking gulps of air. So you never know, at any moment this line could start peeling off here and I could be attached to one. The key to this is staying really, really quiet, minimal disturbance, one cast, getting it in there, slacking it right off, and then sitting back, waiting for it to kick off. Red tail number two of the day. Yeah, for the first time since I've been here, we're quite organised. Got some chicken there, that's what I've got on the Predator rod. Chicken hearts, in fact. Fish, Jurassic Zone boilies, which we're cramming up and throwing in whole. These stinky, massive fish sections that we were using yesterday. A bucket of bits, catapults, pop-ups, the cultured updates. And then some resemblance of organisation in here. Good to go, ready for another day's fishing. Let's do it. It's been a bit of a disjointed morning, but started to work the swim, putting out some of the, the rice meal, rice bran, Tom. And uh, yeah, I've been fishing with a method feeder again with a very short hook link uh, and with just a simple 15 mil scopex squid pop up. A few big balls going over the top and then proceeded to set up a a waggler rod but this time you know like the old bagging wagglers where the method feed, feed is molded around the bottom of the float but I only managed to get a couple of casts in before the margin rod went away and that was another red tail cat it's just mental anyway what I think or what Tom thinks I might have hooked now is part of the piranha family Tom Tom Baki. Um, it's almost like a discus shaped fish and it is fighting really strange Two or three times now I thought it's fallen off, where it's coming very, very fast back towards me, shaking its head an awful lot. Um, but you never know, it could be anything. 
but it is one of those species I'd love to, to get in and have a look at. Those things are incredible. Tambaki. And the fight was out of hand. Very jagged and incredibly fast. What's next on the agenda? Next one, I'd like a Paku. Paku, yeah. And then an Ari. 100% an Ari Fiber, yeah. Yeah, we'll try for that this evening. That witching hour again when it ah. all kicks off here. <laughs> the shakes are on. Lost a chow prior, chow prior, prior catfish yesterday. The speed at which it took off, similar, maybe not quite as quick. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? It's part of the fun. Doesn't feel really heavy. It just feels powerful and fast. You know, I'm just sort of guiding it back in again, like walking it on a lead and. I know at any minute it's just gonna bust off again. It's not down deep, it's up quite high in the water. It does feel quite heavy actually. Look at that. <laughs> My biggest red tail so far, and it's substantial. I'm really struggling to hold it. <sighs> it's how big, Tom? the width of it. Could be pushing up to 50, 60 maybe. <laughs> I really like these fish and uh, I think I've said it already. Pound for pound. Yeah. You're the strongest in it guys. Really, really. Really. Thank you. Thank you. Mega. Nicest Indian in the lake. Mega, mega Indian carp. Look at the pearlescent colours. You know, people go on about linears and real scaly old ones and that. To be fair, I'm just as impressed with that. That is one mega, mega specimen of a fish. Epic carp. Amazing! Can it? Well, it's been another mega day, and there's no doubt about it, I couldn't have done it without you, bro. Thanks for everything. Oh, it's been learned, a, <laughs> learned a lot from Tom, and basically had the loveliest of times. Yeah, pickups. Yeah. <laughs> Sound. Nah, this is where I baited. I filled it in, didn't I? I put a whole bucket in. Yeah, yeah, I can cast this perfectly. Look at all pluming and colouring. Now I cast it. Soft, not too hard. It's an not too hard. 
Oh, 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 oh. Back in, back in, back in. Go again. Small one. It's a bra. <laughs> Well, I literally have just hooked and lost my first arapaima. As Tom said, shitter. I don't know, 80, 100 pounds, something like that. These boys here, when they're fishing for them, they want them 200, 300 pounds. So the rod's going straight back out there. We've got a load of bait down on the spot. It's literally just the next peg along, which allows you to go down there, throw a little bit of food in, and then cast quite accurately over the top. <sighs> it's getting exciting. This is the best bit of the day now, 100%. Yeah. Come on out there. Oh, he's just gone to the right. Yeah, he's gone now, haven't he? No, he's there now. That's on your own. Yeah, I know. Uh, where shall I go? Where? There. Yeah, there. In front of it, in front of it. Right, don't put that to it. Where? Hit it. Tom? It's it. an arapaima <laughs> and I caught it by watching it roll and just casting in front of it. <laughs> down, 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 down. <sighs> yes bro <laughs> oh mate it's so big <sighs> if anyone doubted the potential of scope rods if I'm lucky enough to land this You'll see just what they are capable, just what they are capable of taming. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, mate! Fucking oh, mate! Look at the size of it! Hey! Oh. <laughs> that face for you, mate. I caught an arapaima! <laughs> oh, so man! Crazy, mate. We're only hey. three days in. I've had so many different species already. And this thing here is just colossal. Absolutely colossal. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> nice welcome, mate. Enjoy it. What an amazing fish. This has made my trip and I've still got two or three days left. Um, it is just a remarkable creature, an incredible battle. And yeah, I'm, I'm literally blown away. Sweet. Incredible moment. It's just incredible, thank you. What do you think, Alan? Uh, <laughs> the species off the list and a tambaki. And a tambaki. Time for a beer, mate. Yeah, yeah. time for a beer. <sighs> Man. I'm psyched to the bone. I'm stinking. And I've been completely battered by mosquitoes this last hour. But I couldn't be happier. Again, I've had the most amazing day. And to top it off with a, a monstrous arapaima, somewhere in the region of 200 pounds, yeah. Dreams literally came true today. Uh, probably gonna spend tomorrow really trying to catch a, a monster carp, you know, monster being, you know, over 100 pounds, and ideally in excess of 150 pounds, potentially even bigger. So that's gonna be the focus of the day tomorrow. Um, if I can knock that off nice and early in the morning, get a big one, 
I'll jump onto the pellet waggler and try and catch a paku up in the water, just flicking pellets over the float. But whatever happens from here on in, it doesn't matter. I've had the time of my life. This place really is something else. With some much needed grub, I was ready for another full on day, with the first job being getting some fresh rigs prepared. Not a hook link material I've ever used before, in fact it's not even a hook link material, 55 pound braided leader, but due to not only the strength of these fish in here, but also the fact that some have very very abrasive pads, um, and also some sharp teeth, it is important that you use something that's up to, to the job. This particular braided lead has got loads of Kevlar inside it, which um, yeah, makes it really, really strong. Got my braided leader. Um, disappointingly, I forgot my hooks. Um, when I was packing all my gear, you're fitting everything into all these crevices and stuff. Um, I thought I'd managed to get everything in, all, all the essentials anyway. But when I emptied my work box, took my tackle box out and uh, went through the big mesh pocket and the smaller mesh pocket on one side, I forgot to go through the hook section. And I'm really disappointed in myself because I probably wouldn't have brought our normal twisters or twister long shanks, which is my normal pattern of hook, but I would have brought our brutes. They are an exceptional hook, really strong in the wire. Mark Vosen's worked incredibly hard to deliver a hook that will literally land pretty much anything. So yeah, wanted to use those, turned up, realized I left them at home. Tom's kindly let me some of his hooks. Um, again, like any fish in, I don't think the pattern matters too much. What is really, really important is they're strong. Um, that's the fundamental here. Um, first thing, I'm gonna take the barb off because it is a barbless only water. And to do that, I'm just gonna use my Leverman's and give it a good old crunch. And if I haven't removed it completely, that looks really good to be fair. I will take one of the pinpoint files and just file the barb down as well. But yeah, barb's removed. And then I simply whip it on with a knotless knot. I'm gonna go around seven times. All the way up like so. And I'm gonna go back over a couple of times. And then just pop the tag end back down through the eye. You like them? If it blows up, it blows up. But we've done all right so far. We're on day three and um, as they say, scopes can cope. There you have it. Let's see if we can't get one of these amazing Siamese carp over a hundred pounds. Jumped on the pellet waggler, had a couple of takes on this, landed some Siamese carp, and yeah, just carried on flicking in the Jurassic Mountain pellets, and just fished over the top of that, half a culture look back with a little pop up on top, pellet waggler style, got myself a Paco, mega. Well, another species ticked off the list, this time a Paco. Now on the pellet waggler, such an exciting method, watching that water out there boil and swirl. Yeah, wicked fight, real jaggedy, um, yeah. I love this place. What an incredible fish. Literally can't get anything done here. Tom and I were just about to do a bit of traditional tide fishing involving the use of a short piece of bamboo cane. And like everything, the moment you want to do something, whether that be eat your lunch, have a drink, prepare a new rig, Guaranteed the rod's gonna go off. He's that prolific. Shouldn't be complaining though. It's a lovely, lovely problem to have. Ah. 
Well, there's a huge storm coming in over my shoulder, and that can hopefully only mean one thing. Those predators are gonna get on the munch this evening, and hopefully I can get another chow pie. Well, how about that? An amazing brace of sightings. Well oh, done, mate. <laughs> Incredible. Yet yeah, again, another prolific, prolific day of fishing. Amazing. Here we go. Well done, mate. Well done. Go on, Tom. Go on, son. Yeah. 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 That is awesome. Go on the snide. <laughs> Go on the little scope snide. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. That's your proper Asian. Well, how about that? I adopted the traditional Thai tactic where normally you'd use a bamboo rod and just fish with fish eyes on the hook. But this time I used one of my little travel snide rods, dropped it in the edge here, and I've caught a very, very, I've got to say rare, um, Asian red tail. So not the normal red tail. This one's a good size. They don't get caught very often from here, but yeah, by sneaking around in the margins, I've managed to catch a really, truly magnificent fish. Oh, blown away, what a moment. And to make it even more intense, the guys thought I might have hooked a snake, <laughs> which kind of freaked me out a little bit, but when this thing popped up, wow, this place is just out of this world. All set for the last hour. Two rods still out for the carp. Fished on that lovely hard spot about 15 metres out. And then I've gone proper nuts with this rod here, fishing it washing line style, right the way across to the other side of the lake, pulling quite a substantial catfish into the middle of the lake, hoping for a chow prior. Fights carried on into the early evening. Once again, another amazing day of non-stop action. It's day five and I'm feeling pretty broken. Tom and I went out on midnight manoeuvres last night on the moped, snakehead fishing in all manner of different places, avoiding massive snakes and wild dogs that were trying to bite us. Yeah, crazy adventure. Um, but for now, I'm gonna head around and see Martin. He's hooked into something really, really huge. Let's go check it out. Well, Martin? I think it's probably about six pounds. Oh my Lord. No way! Oh my god. 
I'm done, man, playing it. There's a lot of ice to be had at Jurassic, but there's also monsters. What do you reckon that, Alan? Look at the size of it! One of the biggest carp in the world. Ooh. Well done, mate. Mega, mega fish, mega fish. And I can vouch for that. I've caught so many of those carp since I've been here. But there's also some truly enormous ones. And that's not even the biggest. No, no, there's bigger still. Yeah, what a place. You're gonna get that, mate. This is a regular occurrence. <laughs> Two bites at once. One on a little bit of fish section, just fish down to the next peg. But he's really accurately bait. And the other one out on the big carp spot. Okay. Three on. <laughs> Well, what a mega moment, triple take. <sighs> of course we couldn't deal with three at once, but we did manage to deal with Fine two. Again. An incredible Indian carp and a really big red tail. Sick moment. Yeah. Yes. Big ups to him. Incredible, mate. Can we get him back? Yeah. Wait. You want to drink, Tom? Yeah, I'll just sweat my name out. My name's Still cold? Yeah, freezing cold, mate. I can't, ice boxes are really good. Keeps them cold all day. All day long. Try a bit of chicken carcass now. Yeah. Carry on feeding the chicken hearts and some pellet and some fish and stuff. But yeah, I really would like to catch a daytime arapaima. There's the bait, dead dead simple. I'm going to walk down now, lower it literally inches off the back and then walk my rod back up here. Come on, big Arapaima, let's have you. Right, well I've lured it in and we've not even managed to set it on a bite alarm and there's a fish on. This place is incredible. So, uh, two second bite. Yeah, took me under. Here we go again. Let's see if I can actually get back to my swim this time. This is actually ridiculous. It's got a massive caterpillar in its mouth. You're never going to get an idea of scale here, but let me tell you, it would fit in the palm of my hands and fill it. 
evil. That. Hold my cast. Yeah, ultra cast and you reel out to one side. One more, then I'll leave you. Yes! Yes! Get that, Martin! Well, I might have that one. I think one enough, Alan. Yeah, I think one enough, Alan. <laughs> They're never enough. I can see you You're continuing to pull. No, I'm definitely one of these angles. Just one last cast, one last cast and then it's dark. They're out there, just regular feeding. It's the wind that kind of kills it. When it's nice and flat, they just seem happy feeding right in the, the upper layers. A bit of perseverance. Got another fish in there. We land on Saturday. Yeah, Saturday, a few hours sleep, straight to Lego land. Well, that's it for me today. Caught loads of fish. Um, we're going to get reeled in now. Head off back to the apartments, have a shower because this evening I'm going to spend some time with the lads at a night market. Last day tomorrow. I've loved every minute of it. I'll have to go and try and catch a massive carp or a really big arapaima. That's it. It's my last day down here at Jurassic Mountain. It's been an incredible week. I'm tired, feel a little bit broken. I've got some mad heat rash. My feet, well, I've been in the water most of the week. I've loved every minute of it. Like literally every single minute of it. But I've gone into swim two today, primarily because since I've been here, the prevailing wind's been hacking down this end. This is also, from what I can gather, a swim that's not fished very often. Swim three gets hammered, swim six gets hammered, swim 12 gets hammered. I've been in all of those pegs uh, in, in my duration of the stay, but not swim two, but it does cover a similar bit of water to swim three, an area that's renowned for doing very, very big carp. It's about 6.30 now, I've got up early, done a couple of laps, and just like every other morning, the bulk of the fish seem to be down here. So I've got two major options today. First thing this morning, up until lunchtime-ish, I'm gonna try for a really, really big carp. And then as we move into the afternoon, the perfect way to end the most fantastic trip ever would be, of course, another big arapaima. Yeah, I caught one in the middle of the week, but it was dark. It'd be nice to get one in the daylight hours. Other than that, tick off a couple more species. It won't be easy, but that's what I'll be trying to do. Maybe a ripsaw catfish. I'd love to hook a chow prior, having lost one on my first night here. Um, definitely need to try for a snakehead. But for now, I'm gonna get that pod set up, get my gear off, start trickling a little bit of bait in. Let's do this, my last day here at Jurassic Mountain. <laughs> Just ordered a full English breakfast, nice cup of tea and an orange juice. To get my energy levels up before something like this happened, too late. This isn't a small carp, this one. You can gain on it, and then it just goes straight back out again. I can't pull any harder. Take the fishing rod, please. I'm done. You can do perfect. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs>
going to Bryce. Well, that was absolutely epic. Tom headed off for a meeting and uh, first rod went and it's a good one, that's for sure. Uh, meanwhile, my beautiful full English breakfast was getting cooked. The other rod went, Tom come back, jumped on the net and May, the lovely waitress, come and give me a hand. Can't thank her enough. He's Teamwork the makes the dream work. Yes, Tom. Well, after day one, I lost count of how many Siamese carp I've caught. I've caught them on the method feeder, I've caught them on the inline lead with the boilies, I've caught them on the pellet waggler. It's my last morning here at Jurassic Mountain and I've had a brace after probably less than an hour of being in here before I'd even ordered breakfast. Martin's come round to give me a hand. May obviously gave me a massive helping hand after dropping my breakfast off. Check out these incredible Jurassic carp. You always get me so talented. Thank you so much, Martin. <laughs> Thank you. Should we lift them? Well. Three, two, two one. one. Oh, oh, oh. Let them go. They are. Well done, Tom. Big ups, man. Thank you. Look at that. She's gone. <laughs> Good night, fish. <laughs> Oh. Yes! Race shot released. Remounted the boilie. Clipped on another bag. Cast it out. I was just sinking the braid. It's gone again. <laughs> Got no rods in the water. By now, that breakfast is definitely freezing cold. I think I've got a tambaki on. <laughs> Mental! Yes! A mega tambaki. <sighs> Wicked yeah. fight. It's red tail. It's an Asian! It's an Asian! What a breath. Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah. <laughs> Species, multiple different types, and also fish bigger than I even truly believed existed in freshwater. Stay up. True, true monsters. Oh, it's been a mega, mega productive morning. I ain't got any rods in the water. That's how crazy it's been. Um, it's important to stay on top of things, so before getting the rods back out, I'm just preparing a load of fresh bags using the Jurassic Classic boilies. Oh, it's so hot. And to them, I'm adding some of the squid powder, which is really, really potent, plus some of their tuna and garlic oil to make a really nice mix. <sighs> gonna get the rods back out here for probably another couple of hours, an hour and a half, have some lunch, but then I'm gonna head down into swim one. There's been a lot of arapaima down there those last few days, and it would be lovely to try and nip one more before finishing up this evening. But for now, Get them cart rods back out so we can get any bigger one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mate. Food is so good. Um, the menu's pretty elaborate to be fair. Um, everything from lots of European, British type dishes. If you want burger and chips or pie and chips, roast dinner on a Sunday. A really extensive Indian menu. You've got your mild curries on there, right the way up to a vindaloo, pop dumps, naan bread. Or 
what I've been having most evenings especially, proper Thai food. I've had a lot of Thai over the years, I often eat it in China or at home, but this really is something else here. I don't know what this is, but it's very fast. Chow Pryor? Could it be? Big sh head shakes, big head shakes. Could it be an Arapaima? This bloke is a nightmare. I cannot get past his swim to get fishing. I walk down, he's got two on at once. Again, this is about the fifth double take today. Nice one. Oh, the average size today has been really good. That's nice. One of probably five braces today. Not just Siamese carp, some incredible species. <sighs> what a place. It's time to go to swim one. Let's see if we can get a final arapaima. Mega. Well. All good things have got to come to an end, eh? That's pretty much my session here at Jurassic Mountain over. I've moved down from swim two into swim one, which is the swim closest to the fantastic restaurant bar and accommodation. Got about an hour and a half's fishing left. We look set to have a, a truly fantastic sunset and I'm gonna spend this last hour, hour and a half, just dropping rods right in the edge to see if we can't catch one more arapaima. <sighs> Best week's fishing I've had in a long, 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 long time. To end it on a really big arapaima would be something truly special. Probably gonna get played by red-tailed catfish, but to be fair, of all the species I've caught since I've been here, they're probably my favorite and certainly the strongest fighting. I'm gonna get a quick mix knocked up now, primarily consisting of pellets, but also lots of fish. And I'm just gonna break these up, give them a good squeeze in my hands, and literally just bait underneath the, the rod tips. Like Ollie would say, half a wrap. But the difference here is you're potentially half a wrap in for fish in excess of 300 pounds. You never know. Like I say, I've already had the most amazing week. Almost feel a little bit greedy, wanting to end it on a final big arapaima, but I've got to be in it to win it, as they say. Well, we probably haven't been in here more than an hour and I've had five of these red tails so far. This one is probably the biggest one, and it was actually caught on the float with a lump of chicken carcass underneath it. It's looking likely that I'm gonna miss out on that final arapaima, but does it matter? Of course it doesn't. I've had the time of my life. This is an arapaima. Definitely, definitely, definitely an arry. It's a nice way to win the trip. Wow, mate. How's it feeling? <sighs> I caught one kind of middle of the week and it actually blew my mind. <sighs> when you know how big these things grow, and you know that you've got like a, a nine foot scope and just normal fishing tackle and you're actually playing something that is almost certainly taller than I am, you know, longer than I am. Yeah, it's a very strange feeling. Incredible feeling. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much. Big thank you to Eddie, <coughs> Sam, Jules, all the staff that have looked after me for my stay here. And really importantly, Tom. Tom. Just that easy, Tom.
Well, what an amazing moment and a fantastic end to the week. I can't thank the guys enough. Eddie, Jules and Sam for their incredible creation here at Jurassic Mountain. Martin, thank you so much for the invite and a fantastic week's fishing alongside of you. A big thank you to all the staff and especially to you, Tom. No worries. Bruv, it's been so sick. Just look at that. Well, it's time to let this one go. There's actually arapaima around us as we speak. I'm going to throw in that last little bit of pellet and chopped fish. Get those two rods out. Come on, Martin. You know there's always time for one last cast. Incredible. Back. Yeah. Well done, Tom. Well Thank on. you. Thank well you. Done, Tom. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done.